Suppose you're at the beach when there's a high tide coming in. Somebody asks you, why does the water go up? And you say, because of the moon's gravity. Well, that's like answering a question, how does an automobile drive? With the answer, because of gasoline. Strictly speaking, it's not incorrect, but you haven't really explained much, have you? In my opinion, that simple question, how did the water go up, is a good angle. Let's explore it. Let's look at the surface of an imaginary cross-section of water at two different times. I've chosen a water volume of 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters. I've chosen this volume because it neatly contains one liter of water, which is approximately one kilogram. Now at noon, it's at the surface. And at three o'clock, that surface has risen by 50 centimeters. Now, what made that water rise? Let's look at all the forces that are involved. At noon, our test volume experienced a downward force by Earth's gravity. It also experienced pressure on its surfaces, air pressure from above and water pressure on the side surfaces and the lower surface. Now, let's assume that air pressure was constant throughout the day and we will set the initial water level as the zero level. If at noon the situation is at equilibrium, it means that the water underneath our leader supports the weight of our leader. In other words, the downward force of its weight is counteracted by the upward pressure of the water underneath. The one kilogram pushes down with 9.81 newtons, let's say 10 newtons, over a surface area of 10 by 10 centimeters. This equates to 1000 newtons per square meter, or one kilopascal. For every 10 centimeters you descend, the water pressure will increase with another kilopascal as more water is pressing down from above until at the sandy bottom, you detect a pressure of 10 kilopascals. At three o'clock, this has changed as the water has gone up by 50 centimeters. For this situation to be in an equilibrium, you will find that at every level below our original surface level, water pressure has increased by five kilopascals, or has it? Because here I will introduce our lead performer, the moon. The moon's mass causes gravitational attraction on the Earth and vice versa. However, a mass at the surface of the Earth closest to the moon is some 6,000 kilometers closer to that moon and will consequently experience a slightly greater gravitational acceleration than the Earth underneath. Mind you, this difference in acceleration is very, very small. The moon is on average some 380,000 kilometers away from the Earth. Over that distance, 6,000 kilometers really isn't all that much. Feel free to calculate this with Newton's law of universal gravitation. The difference in accelerations is in the order of one millionth of a meter per second square. So, looking at our three o'clock situation, we find that we still have a downward force of 10 Newtons caused by the Earth's gravity. But we now also have an upward force of one millionth of a Newton due to the position of the moon overhead. So our test volume is only pressing down on the water underneath with a pressure of 0.9999999999 kilopascals. As the moon's attraction lightens the water column for every subsequent liter underneath, the water pressure on the sandy bottom will only be 14.9999999985 kilopascals. I hope you will agree with me that such a tiny attraction by the moon was unable to lift and support our test volume of water by 50 centimeters. But if the attraction didn't, then what did? Over a period of three hours, the water pressure from underneath has increased by five kilopascals. And this is now supporting our test mass 50 centimeters above its original level. The vertical velocities of moving upwards 50 centimeters in three hours are very small, so very little pressure in excess of that five kilopascals was required to move the water. Let me reassure those of you who now think that I'm trying to convince you that it's not the moon that's causing the tides, because it is the moon that's doing it. Let me show you how. The earth isn't flat, it's roughly globe shaped. So water, well away from where we are, will be slightly further away from the moon. 
experiencing a slightly lesser acceleration towards our position, but, and this is essential, these vectors are angled and have a horizontal component towards our position. These horizontal components are unaffected by Earth's gravity, which works vertically. That means that these forces accumulate over distance. Liquids with low internal friction, like water, do this. Desert sands and rocks effectively don't do this. This pressure doesn't just lift water, it also moves water horizontally. A pressure gradient won't just sit there unresolved. As water is getting pushed from behind, it will attempt to move forward. It will do so until it's stopped by at least equal pressure. This can happen, for instance, in the case of a tidal bulge, as the water runs into water which is moving in the opposite direction because of a similar but opposite pressure gradient. The water in the middle will rise and so create increased water pressure underneath which slows down, balances, or even reverses the tidal current. But water doesn't just run into other water. Tidal currents or a lifted mass which has gained momentum may run into a continental shelf, up a coastline, or be funneled into a narrow passage. In that case, the water may rise far in excess of the static potential. Tidal ranges like in the Bay of Fundy, or at Mont Saint-Michel in the Bay of Saint-Malo are examples in this. One last thing I'd like to stress, when you're talking about the tides, try to avoid using the words pull or pulling, because whatever you say next in that sentence will almost certainly be incorrect. In this case, the only justifiable use of the word pull is for the gravitational attraction on every single particle of mass or water. All these tiny individual forces accumulate into a pressure. The transfer of forces leading to tidal effects is affected by pressures, not by anything being pulled. And no, that's not the same thing. Imagine putting two solid walls on the ocean floor like this. The water at point A simply wouldn't rise. It was being pushed up by the pressure which is now being withheld. It wasn't being pulled. Why am I so adamant about that? Besides that it's incorrect, if you allow yourself to think about tidal rises as an effect of something being pulled up, then you're missing the point about what's happening. The point is that nowhere on Earth is there a single particle where the tidal pull, the gravitational pull from the Moon, is not being overpowered by Earth's gravity a million times over. I hope I was able to clear things up. For those of you who are still confused now, I can only say keep reading, keep digging, it is worthwhile.